Hello and welcome back to another Construct 3 tutorial series. This is a short series for a mechanic involving some loot. This particular tutorial has two features to it. On your screen we have a green triangle that represents our player and these blue squares represent our enemy. And I have our player set up to be able to fire shots and our enemies can absorb three shots before being destroyed and dropping loot. So if I hit it three times, the enemy is destroyed and the loot is created and moves from the center outwards for a small amount of time and then stops. And then the second feature is if we get close enough, the loot magnetizes to our player from any direction, from anywhere on the screen, as long as we get close enough. So if I just inch forward, you can kind of see as soon as we get into that range, it automatically just magnetizes to our player. And I have it where it is fast enough that it uh, the player cannot outrun it. You can try, <laughs> but it eventually catches up to you. So that is the neat little feature that we are going to create today. Let's get started. I'm going to create a new project. I'm just going to call mine Loot uh, Magnet. You can call yours whatever you want. I'm going to keep everything as it is on my screen here and hit create. And if I zoom out, you see our little dotted line here. That is our viewport and it is 1280 by 720. And then if I click on the layout itself, you see that it is 2560 by 1440. That's this whole lighter gray square. I'm going to keep it like that so that we can move into different parts of the level. Okay. I'm going to double click on the layout and scroll down and pick a sprite. And let's insert that wherever. I'm going to change the size to 48 by 48. And if I zoom in, my grid is a, a one by one. I'm going to go configure that to 24 by 24. So now I can see where the middle of each side is. And I'm going to grab my line tool and pick a nice green color. You can pick whatever color you want. This is going to be our player character. And I'll start in the top left corner and drag a line out to the middle of the right and do the same thing from the bottom left corner, just like that. Then grab our paint bucket tool, fill it in, and we have a nice little green triangle. All right, I'm going to slide this down to a black color, get our pencil tool, and I'm just going to make two little eyes. This just helps us establish where the front of the player is, and we want him facing right. That is the zero degree inside the Construct 3 game engine. Next, let's get our collision polygon tool, and by default, it's the square of the sprite object. I want it to be the triangle, so only three sides. So I'm gonna get rid of one of these nodes. I'll right click on one and delete it. And then just drag this one over and we have a nice little triangle. And then let's grab our origin tool. It's in the middle of the square sprite object. But if our player rotates, it's gonna rotate on this axis right here. And that's gonna look kind of funny. So I'm going to move it back towards the wider part of its body. 13 for the X and 24 for the Y, that should work. I'm gonna exit out of that, and with it still selected, I'm gonna rename it player. All right, our player object should still be selected over here in its properties panel. I'm gonna scroll down to edit behaviors, add a new behavior, and down here under movements, I want the eight direction behavior. And while we're here, let's add one more behavior, and I want the scroll to behavior on our player. That way the camera will follow the player around no matter where we move it. Okay, so if we play that, you can see our player's changing directions, but it looks like he's just kind of off in one place until we get to the edge and then he kind of flies off the screen. But in the middle, it doesn't look like he's moving. He is, it's just we have a solid background and it's hard to tell what's going on. We will change that. But first, I'm going to exit out of that, come back over here to the Properties panel, and in the Behaviors under 8 Direction, I'm going to change some of these attributes. I'm going to bump up the max speed to 450, change Acceleration and Deceleration both to 3000, and then 8 Directions, Smooth, and then we'll leave the rest of us how it is. We're going to change this default controls here in a little bit, but for right now, we're going to keep using the arrow keys. So back over on the layout, let's double click on the layout again, Scroll down, get another sprite. I'm going to insert this somewhere up here. I'm going to change the size to 32 by 32. 
and I'll turn off the grid. Grab my paint bucket tool and I'm just gonna get me a nice little brown color. This is gonna be our wall. I'm gonna go something like that and just fill that in and grab the origin tool and make sure it is in the bottom left corner. If you have a keypad on your keyboard, then one, the one key is bottom left. Otherwise you can right click on origin up here, go to quick assign and pick bottom left. Okay, let's exit out of that with it selected. Let's highlight this and change the name to wall. I wanna create just a, a little barrier around the edge so our player can't go wandering off like it just did when we uh, play tested it. So first off, if we click on the layout, it'll bring up the layout properties. I'm going to go turn snap to grid on. Mine's set to 32 by 32. And I'll zoom in. And actually I'm gonna make two copies of this. So with it highlighted, hold down control, click and drag another copy. And we can just stretch that out. I'm actually gonna move it onto the layout. And something like that. And then this one, we can stretch out like that. And then with that still selected, actually I'm gonna come in one. Let's highlight this one, control click and drag out a copy to that side and do the same thing up here. Control click, drag out a copy. Okay, if we select the wall object in our project panel, it brings up the object properties for the wall object. You can see it highlights all the instances that we created. And we want to edit behavior, add a behavior, and pick the solid. Now our player can't go out of the playing area. There it is. We are bound to the playing area. Very good. Okay. You notice we still have that issue where it's hard to tell that our player is actually moving. So what I'm going to do, I want to create a background that gives us a little bit of uh, texture so we can see that our player is moving. So let's double click on the layout and scroll down to tiled background, insert that and just click to insert it on the layout. I am going to change the size to 128 by 128 and then reconfigure my grid to 64 by 64 and then I'll turn it on. So now we have four squares here and I'm going to grab a solid black color and then in my HSL tab here, I'm going to put the luminance at 12 and get the square tool. And I'm just going to make a square in this top left part up here and then do the same thing for this bottom right part. And then if we take our paint bucket and fill both of those in, I'm going to bump the luminance up to 16 and with that paint bucket still selected, fill in these other two. And then if I turn my grid off, we have a little checker pattern here. Okay, I'm going to put that in the corner and then drag it out to fit the whole layout. Now, we have a little issue here. We're covering the player up and what we could do is right click, go to Z order and send to bottom of layer. And there's our player. Now, if you are using the free version of Construct 3, this is how you will have to do it because you can only have two layers in the free version. We are going to create another layer later on, so we will need that second layer. If you have the subscription version, then we can just go ahead and create the other background layer now. So in the layers panel, I'm gonna right click, add layer to the bottom, and I'm gonna rename it to background. And then I'm going to click on the tile layer and in its properties, change the layer to background, and then it disappears. And that's because layer zero, our original layer, if we click on it, it brings up its properties. Over here in appearance, we have transparent. Let's make that true. And now that gray solid is gone. So we can see our background. The reason I want this background on a different layer is if I misclick and grab it and I move it around, I don't want that. If it's on the background layer, I can lock the background layer and now I can't select it. If you are working in the free version, then you're just going to have to be a little extra careful. Okay, let's uh, double click on the layout again and scroll down towards the bottom under input. Let's select keyboard. And if we hop over to the event sheet, let's go ahead and add an event and grab that keyboard we just added and go down to key is down. Let's choose W, done, and then add an action, get our player, and we have our eight direction behaviors right here. I'm gonna simulate control and W is going to be up, all right? 
I'm going to click on this so that it highlights the whole block. Control C to copy, Control V to paste. And I'm gonna paste three total times. So that gives us four blocks of code here. In the second one, double click to go in, change that W to an S, hit done. Change the action from up to down. Go into the third one. Let's change that to A. And A will be our left. And then the last one will be D. And D is right. All right, okay, back on the layout tab, I want to create a projectile for our player. So make sure your layer zero is highlighted because we want everything to go on this layer and not our background layer. So on layer zero, let's double click on the layout, scroll down to Sprite, insert that, and I'm going to change the size to 16 for the width and seven for the height. I'm going to go reconfigure my grid to one by one and turn it on. And I'm going to get my pencil tool and pick an orange color and I'm actually gonna just type this in. I'm gonna say 24 for the hue, 100 for the saturation, and then 42 for the luminance. And this is under the HSL tab that I use. With the pencil tool selected, I'm just gonna make me a little fireball looking thing. You can certainly make your own little projectile if you wish. Now I'm going to bump this luminance up to 65, just start putting in an inner ring inside of our fire object here. And then I'm gonna bump that luminance up to, I'll do 76. And then bump it up one more time, let's go 90. And just fill this part in, and I might even just do those as well. So something like that. I'm going to grab the origin point tool, and I want this to be the base of the fireball. It's going to shoot in that direction. I'm going to move it towards the back, but then I want to move it in one pixel. And I also want it to be in the middle, but it goes in pixel increments. So instead of three or four, I'm going to say one for the X and 3.5 for the Y. And then make sure our bounding box covers the whole box. Let's exit out of that and rename this fire or whatever you want to name it. Okay, with it still selected in the properties, let's scroll down, edit behaviors, let's add a new behavior, and scroll down on this, and let's select the bullet behavior. And while we're here, let's add another behavior and pick destroy outside of layout, okay? Now, anytime we shoot one of these little fireballs, as soon as it goes outside of the layout where we can't see anyways, it will destroy the object for us. I need to spawn this fireball from our player. So we're going to set up a way for us to press a key and the player will shoot a fireball out. And I want it to spawn, I'm gonna turn my uh, snap to grid off so I can show you. I want it to spawn you know, somewhere right about there and then shoot out. So we have an origin point here, you can kind of see it right there, but we set that up right here on the end of the fireball. So I need to set up an origin point on our player for it to spawn from. So let's double click into the player and we already have a origin point in the middle. That's for the player to rotate on that axis right there. But I want one up here to spawn our fireball. So in the image points panel over here, let's right click, add an image point and it places it right there for us. I'm just going to move it right up about there. So an X of 45, a Y of 24. Exit out of that, pick our fireball object and go over here to the properties and in the bullet behavior, let's change that to 800 and everything else should look like this. Make sure your set angle is selected. Let's go over to the event sheet and set up a way for us to fire that thing. Add an event, go into our keyboard object and on key pressed and let's choose that key and that'll be the space key for me. You can choose whatever you want and then hit OK. And let's add an action and go into our player object. And I'm going to type in spawn another object and we'll click to choose that object. It'll be the fireball. And that is going to be on our layer zero that we're playing on. And the image point, the one we just added is actually image point one. So if we go into our player again, we can see the origin 
That middle one right there is number zero and image point one that we set up on his nose there is image point one. Okay, let's play that. There goes our fireball that we have sitting on the layout. So if we hit the space key, we fire. If we turn up, left, down, or even diagonally, uh, it shoots where, whichever direction we are facing. So we have something to work with. And look at our background. We can actually see that we are moving now. Fantastic. All right, let's go over to our layout again. And I'm actually going to move our fire object off to the side of the layout. And because I moved it outside of the layout, it will actually destroy itself as the game starts because we, we gave it this destroy outside layout behavior. So now if we play, you don't see that fireball shooting across the screen. I should have already said this by now, but we need to be saving and saving often. So I'm going to go ahead and save. If this is your first time to save this project, it is going to ask you to give it a name and put it in a certain location somewhere on your hard drive. So go ahead and do that and I will do the same. All right, let's go ahead and create one more object here. I'm gonna double click on the layout, go down to sprites and insert wherever. All right, I'm going to change the size to 48 by 48 and then I will zoom in a little. And this orange, I'm going to change to a blue color and the second one, I want a solid white. And then I'll click on it again to make sure that the blue is on the left, white is on the right. I want a border and fill both checked. I'm going to set my border thickness to two. And then I'm going to click and drag out a rectangle. Make sure that your origin is right in the middle and that the bounding box fills the whole area. Okay, I'm going to exit out of that. Rename this enemy. And there we go. Art 101. We now have us a blue square enemy. Uh, I'm going to turn my snapped grid back on. There we go. So for our enemy, I showed you in the preview at the beginning of this video that uh, I set it up to take three hits to destroy an enemy. To make that happen, we have to give our enemy an instance variable that keeps track of how many times it's been hit. So with this enemy object selected, let's go over here to the properties, edit instance variable, add new instance variable, and I'm going to call this one hits, and it's going to be a number, and it'll start at zero. And then now we can go over to our event sheet, and let's add a new event and get our fire object. And I'm going to type in on collision with another object, and that object is going to be enemy. Hit done. Let's add an action. Let's go into our enemy object and scroll down to instance variables, and I want add two, hits, value of one. So now every time we hit our enemy with a fire, it will uh, add one to the hits variable. All right, let's add one more thing. Let's go to our layout and let's double click on the layout, go down to sprite and insert. And then I'm going to change the size to 20 by 20, zoom in. And I'm gonna get my circle tool here. And same thing here, I'm going to pick a nice red color and leave the second color white. Make sure that uh, border and fill are ticked. Uh, the other two are not ticked. And a border thickness of one this time. And I'm gonna start in the top left corner and drag down to the bottom right corner. And we got us a nice little circle. Make sure our origin point is in the middle and that our bounding box covers the whole square. We can exit out of that, and I'm going to rename this loot. And now we have uh, some loot for our player to collect and our enemy to drop. Okay, but I don't want that piece of loot sitting there on our layout, but uh, we do need to make sure that it is created as the game starts. So I'm going to put it off to the side and then go into the event sheet and add an event, go into system, and I'm going to type in on start of layout. Click and drag this all the way to the very top and add an action to it and go pick our loot object and type in destroy. That way, that object won't be in this layout once the game has uh, loaded up. 
I think I'm going to stop it here. We have everything set up, all our objects created. And in the next video, we will start setting up the first loot feature, the enemy dropping the loot. Make sure that you are saving and I will see you in the next video.